right, on to a second set of questions I gathered from friends of mine. Do you have a go-to comfort snack for days that aren't so good? And I definitely do. Ice cream. Ice cream for me is a huge go-to because my migraines, cold stuff really helps my migraines, brain freezes especially. So I'm always like gulping down either sherbet or ice cream when I have a migraine. So I'm gonna say ice cream. Ice cream is my go-to snack. How does it feel to be an incredibly awesome and inspiring big? That's a question from my little and only as awesome as it feels to have an incredible and inspiring little. If you could be best friends with any animal, what would it be? Well, I'm already best friends with my favorite animal and those are my two dogs, Lacey and Loper. Do you have any experience with the effects of exercise on chronic fatigue? Like, does it actually help or does it make you more exhausted? It honestly depends. I'm gonna make a whole video about the difference between exhaust and fatigue and how exhaust I find really rewarding and fatigue I find really depressing. For me, exercise helps chronic fatigue. That's not to say it will for everybody, but I myself just, it helps your body keep in condition. Your body falling deconditioned because of chronic fatigue is gonna be the number one thing that keeps chronic fatigue going. You're fatigued, so you stay in bed, so your body gets deconditioned, which leads to greater fatigue. It's an awful cycle. It is not your fault. It is not anybody's fault. It is your body being your body and outside influences being outside influences. Um, but in my experience, anything you can do to keep your body conditioned will help stop the cycle of chronic fatigue. Are there any problems you think are unique to women suffering from chronic illness slash pain? Well, for any person that has a vagina, I'm gonna say, um, anybody that experiences a period, woman or otherwise, I, otherwise identifying, um, anybody with a vagina who experiences a period, that is going to be a very unique experience because it tends to flare up your other symptoms. So on top of everything else you've already got going on, it's all gonna get worse with your period. So that really sucks. That's why I went ahead and got an IUD. I don't experience those anymore. I used to like pass out, vomit, I have three day long migraines, it was awful, and now I don't have any of that, which is wonderful. Uh, so I highly recommend looking into that, talking to your OBGYN, all of that good stuff. But I know that um, women and POC and trans individuals all have a hard time sometimes accessing healthcare because we are all taken less seriously by doctors. I know I can speak to my experience as a woman. Oftentimes my pain is discounted. I'm told either it's all in my head or it's growing pains when I was younger or uh, period cramps is what I got told a lot. It's just, oh, it's just swelling in your joints from your period, uh, that kind of stuff. So we get kind of discounted a lot, kind of shoved to the side. I can't speak for the experience of a POC or a trans individual, but I have heard lots of horror stories of you know, African Americans, their pain being taken less seriously, not taken as seriously by the doctor, so they're not given the pain medication they need, which also with the war on opioids does happen. Opioid addiction is a huge problem in our country, but it also means that doctors are punishing chronic pain patients, and the marginalized groups are the first ones to get punished. Uh, and I know trans individuals are always suffering with doctors who either won't treat them because of their identity or won't uh, prescribe them the things they need because they're on other things. Um, so it's just, it's a whole mess. The healthcare system in general is a mess. So I could go on about it forever, but I won't. Thank you very much for your question. I could obviously rant about that forever. What coping methods have you developed on your worst pain days? Uh, so I have come to the realization that some days you just have to survive. I, I was getting hung up for a while on like living every day as if it was my last. And there were so many days I'd be like, man, I just spent all day in bed. That is so upsetting. Like I'm so down on myself for that. But that just made everything worse. I, my best advice is just to accept that some days you're not going to be on it. Some days you're going to have to stay in bed. Now, if that becomes every day, there's a problem. You're going to need to find a way to either adapt to that lifestyle or make it work. I myself am currently trying to live a more able-bodied lifestyle. I'm trying to be up and about more. So when I have several days in a row where I'm just in bed, I start to get worried. I start to want to get up and exercise. I start to want to recondition myself. Um, but it is very important to be able to accept those bad days. I think acceptance is the number one coping mechanism I can recommend. Have you ever vomited on a street harasser? Can you? Uh, so unfortunately, no, I have never vomited on a street harasser, but it is a life goal of mine. I can vomit on command. So one of these days, yeah, I'm gonna make that happen. I'll try and record it for you guys. Thanks for the idea. Why is yoga the absolute worst suggestion for people with EDS? Okay, this is a complicated question. This question is coming from the fact that so many people, when they say, oh, I have chronic pain, or oh, I have EDS, get told, oh, you should try yoga. 
as if it's a cure-all for any kind of chronic pain. But specifically EDS, that's kind of a problem because in yoga you focus on stretching, stretching out your joints, which is great for normal people, except my joints are already stretched out. They are too stretched out. So stretching them further would only worsen my issues. Now, yoga can have some core strengthening capabilities, so as long as you know what the limits are and you know not to stretch yourself too far, um, it can be okay to build your core using yoga, but you'll find most yoga instructors will encourage you to like stretch through the length of your stretch, which isn't safe to do. What If you're going to be an EDS or practicing yoga, you need to find where your normal range of motion, the normal range of motion is, and stop there and focus on building strength as opposed to like extending your full flexibility because then you may not necessarily have the strength behind it and that's how you get hurt. What matters most is getting to that point of normal flexibility and holding it there for strength purposes. Many people focus too much on the flexibility of yoga, which is why it is such a bad idea for EDSs, because we don't want to be more flexible. We have enough of that. What is the weirdest reaction you've gotten to EDS so far? Oh, y'all really flexible? That must be fun in bed. More than once, it's happened more than once. All right, friends, that was my Q&A. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.